Today we're talking about the late neoclassical style in both France and England. The direction of architecture was influenced by the events that took place during this time period. Political, social, and economic instability led to the French Revolution in 1789. During the reign of Louis XV, state finances were breaking down. The people wanted more government reform, but the Parliament denied this, which ultimately led to a state of bankruptcy and a destruction of the monarchical system. There were two design styles that were seen at this time, although there were many political changes. The director style was from 1789 to 1804, where three governments were operative, revolutionary, directory, and consulate. Each of these influenced the director style. And the second was the empire style. The direction of the decorative motifs during the empire style were influenced by Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon declared himself Emperor of France in 1804. Financial limitations, political changes and instability, and administrative reforms like abolishing the Academy of Architecture were fundamental to the changes in architecture and design. Financial constraints led to less expensive processes being implemented. First, the use of less expensive woods where beech replaced mahogany. The second, the less use of veneer instead of solid wood. I'm sorry, the less use of solid wood as opposed to veneer. And the third, time-consuming decorative processes were eliminated like marquetry and ebenesis or veneer specialists became almost non-existent. Craftsmen designed in many ways. Those interested in money created pieces in the latest fashions, while those who worked for the crown continued to create in the same role. Then there were the innovators who looked to archeological discoveries as inspiration, like George Jacob. New patrons did not demand the quality that had been seen before, so the level of craftsmanship declined. Quality was sacrificed by the fact that guilds no longer existed, whereas before this, craftsmen had to stamp their pieces. Standards of quality also diminished after the Academy of Architecture was dissolved. The Academy had direction and control of royal buildings, plus made decisions about competitions. This was questioned by the National Assembly, and many objected to the special privileges the members of the Academy received. In administrative reform, they abolished the Academy, which lowered the architectural standards as there were no criteria for judging the qualifications of an architect. So at this point, now anyone could say they were an architect, regardless of their background. So because of this, little building took place at this time. Another influence was the Directory Organized and Institute which housed five academies, one being the Academy of Fine Arts. Political changes were seen in the decorative motifs. One example was Napoleon's expedition into Egypt. This led to the use of scarabs and lotus capitals. The N for Napoleon and the symbol of a B for Bonaparte replaced the L's of the previous monarchs, the King's Louis. Napoleon appointed Charles Percier and Pierre Francois Leonard Fontaine, who strongly influenced the direction of the arts. They were known more for their furniture designs rather than their architecture. They created a reputation by decorating Napoleon's homes. It was largely through their efforts that the Empire style was created. Innovation was rare during this time as building activity, teaching, and practicing were all limited. Changes that were seen in the late 18th century were gradually accepted in the director style and in the Empire style. Many architects could not get commissions so they took this time to publish drawings, accomplishments, theories, and practical aspects of building. A 
Etienne Louis Bouillet and Claude Nicolas Ledoux were interested in geometric forms and incorporated these into architecture. Abbott's Palace at Royaumont by Le Maison had circular rooms, dining and library rooms, and a staircase in the central plan. Investigations into totally circular plans rather than rectangular where interior spaces took on many shapes. Other geometric shapes were used in the interiors um, by developing space saving techniques including small niches, strange stairway shapes, closets, and other areas. The Arc de Triomphe de Carousel is a triumphal arch in Paris, France. It's located on the, pa pala the Palace du Carousel just west of the Louvre. It was designed by Charles Percier and Pierre Fontaine and the arch was made between 1806 and 1808 by the Emperor Napoleon I on the model of the Ark of Septimius Severus in Rome. It was commissioned to commemorate France's military victories in 1805. It was originally surmounted by the famous horses of St. Mark's Cathedral in Venice, captured by Napoleon, but these were returned to Venice in 1815. They were replaced by a quadriga sculpture by Baron Francois Joseph Bozier, depicting peace, riding in a triumphal chariot led by gilded victories on both sides. The composition commemorates the restoration of the Bourbons following Napoleon's downfall. Over in England, Regency characteristics carried over through the first four decades of the late 18th century. Thomas Sheraton introduced classical and Egyptian designs between 1803 and 1806. Ancient cultures influenced ornamental detail greatly because of the defeat of Napoleon's French fleet, fleet by Viscount Horatio in Egypt in 1798. Thomas Hope had a more archaeological accurate approach to ornament than Sheraton because he actually studied in Egypt, Turkey, Syria, and Greece. Sheraton integrated design elements from ancient civilizations such as the lion monopedia, the winged sphinx, the Egyptian head, the lyre, and the palm leaf. At the beginning of the 19th century, the furniture forms were lightly scaled but later became heavier with bronze applications. Looking at the spatial relationships, there was an emphasis on more informal spaces. Attention was on compactness and convenience. New areas were seen like the parlor, the study, the morning room, and the conservatory. Houses were arranged for house parties and open spaces from interior to exterior were created with French doors. Servants' quarters were allowed to be asymmetrically added as opposed to in the basement. Sir John Soane was an English architect who specialized in the neoclassical tradition. He was known to experiment with architectural ideas and to collect antiquities and architectural salvages. John Nash designed the Marble Arch, like much else of the elegance in London. It was built in 1828 as the chief entrance to Buckingham Palace, but when the palace was extended in 1851, the arch was moved to its current site as the entrance to Hyde Park. By tradition, only senior members of the royal family, the king's troops, and the royal horse artillery are allowed to ride or drive through the arch. During the Empire period, there was a tendency to revive classical models. Interest in the past styles based on archaeological evidence and cultural activity was common. Louis XVI was characterized as elegant, graceful, and feminine. While moving into the Empire style, 
It's described as rigid, stiff, grando, and pretentious. And the Directar style is a transition from Louis XVI as a movement over into the Empire style. In England, the picturesque movement in art from which refinement of definition was being undertaken. Picturesque was formulated by using untamed features such as streams, clusters of trees, there was an emphasis on irregularity, asymmetry, and appreciation of historical architecture. The materials and techniques used for their interiors um, there were not many machine tools for woodworking because the industrial production did not begin until the mid-19th century, so carving was still done by hand and mainly for the wealthy. They also used the technique of veneering during the Regency period, which included stringing and banding, cast metal, paintings, iglamaze, and lacquer. Importance was placed on the figure and the color of veneers. Figured mahogany, rosewood, zebra wood were popular among Regency designers because of their grain and color. Satinwood, maple, and ambrosia were also used. Solid wood was mainly replaced by veneer pieces except for chairs and other pieces that were lacquered or painted. Stringing was used as a means to outline design units or to emphasize. Cast metals was used for doorknobs, galleries, bead moldings, and colonnettes. Paintings were used on cheaper wood, high quality wood, and enhancing decorative schemes. The art form of iglamaze was done by applying a gold leaf to the reverse side of glass and then it was decorated by engraving. This was used for mirrors and cabinets. The oriental lacquer consisted of 10 to 20 coats and clay paste was used for painted areas. Human figures, jade and ivory were all used for decoration. Interior architecture. Stylistic influences included Roman, Greek, Chinese, Goth and Gothic derivatives. They ranged from subtle and fine to sturdy and strong. Their wall treatments often had draped textiles as this was highly significant during the Empire style. Draped fabrics were used to create a tent-like feel inside or often a resemblance to Grecian gowns. Otherwise, walls could be plain, painted, or have a series of articulated pilasters that flanked large paintings, doors, windows, and mantles. Wall-to-wall -wall carpeting was being seen and was sewn together in strips. An 8-inch baseboard might be used and capped with a molding. Windows created views and accessibility to the landscape and this was stressed. Often they emphasized simplicity of the treatment of both windows and doors and bow windows were now seen. Ceilings were either flat, concave to a flattened arc, or barrel vaulted. In the previous slide, you saw several painted flat ceilings. Plaster work with geometric designs of circles, squares, octagons, and hexagons would enclose classical figures. And this could be done with paint, as you saw in the previous slide, or built with uh, wood and gesso pieces. You can see a drawing done by Thomas Hope, which is his statue gallery. The ceiling is drawn in the square geometric pattern that might have been used to build out with wood. This next slide shows another example of a barrel vault ceiling with a geometric design, as well as some drawing details of chairs, tables, and decorative motifs by Thomas Hope. Director style furniture. It was influenced by the past styles of Louis XVI and classical styles that were more severe. All of the seating was upholstered 
and armrests had animal heads like a lion, ram, or eagle. Arm supports usually were a baluster, colonnette with forms like a swan or griffin. Tables were round or oval with legs tapering and on casters. Commodes varies but had one main model consisting of short legs with paw feet, three drawers with rectangular poles, and a pilaster front design. Here we can see the Empire style. Most chairs were large scale and put against a wall. The backs were vertical with an emphasis on straight lines. The S profile was used on uprights. Backs were sometimes pierced with lattice or could be upholstered. Armrests were parallel to the floor and decorated with swans, griffins, or human forms. The console table was the most common. The Empire style table was very stiff and formal. Legs varied considerably. Some had a single central, central support incorporating mythical monsters based on antique elements. For the beds of this style, only one side was given a decorative treatment since the long side was placed parallel to the wall or was set within an alcove. Bed hangings were significant in the final treatment and some were much like the sleigh bed we see today with scrolled over ends. In this slide you can see another example of draped beds from the Empire style. And finally, Regency. At the beginning of the 18th century, furniture was lightly scaled, so chairs were more fragile and elegant in design. They were made of beech wood and painted black to be used in the dining parlor. Caning could be used for the seat surface. Later, chairs became heavier and bolder in design. With higher armrests and lion monopedia legs, the sofa was based on ancient Greek style used for reclining. They were characterized by outward curving ends and incurved legs. Thomas Sheraton, George Smith, and Henry Holland were all influential in furniture design of the Regency style. Archaeological accuracy was applied by the Englishman Thomas Hope and Frenchman Charles Percier and Pierre Fontaine, creators of the Empire style. Holland was the primary leader of the early phase of the Regency period. He was instrumental in the transitional phase when there was intense interest in Greek art and architecture characterized by severity of form, restricted ornament, simple lines, and symmetry. While working for the Prince Regent, he combined motifs from Louis XVI and the director's style. Thomas Hope desired to provide authoritarian information on architecture and furniture as a young man. He spent eight years drawing architectural remains abroad. Thomas Hope was born in Amsterdam in 1769 into a wealthy Dutch banking family of Scottish descent. He settled in England around 1796 after an, his exhaustive eight-year grand tour of the Mediterranean countries which included Egypt, Turkey, Greece, and Italy. His work in the Egyptian style has various sources including inspiration from his own travels and publications such as The Voyage d'Amabas Alahat Egypt in 1802. The entire suite and its placement within the Egyptian room is illustrated in a meticulous line drawing in Thomas Hope's household furniture and interior decoration. An exceptional publication which established Hope's reputation as a designer of outstanding vision and influential style. The museum's armchairs and couch form half of the suite of seating furniture originally in the Egyptian room. The other half is presently owned by the Farrington Collection Trust. His Egyptian room was located on the first floor, which was intended to be opened museum-like to the public. 
This pair of armchairs and couch in the Egyptian Revival style were designed by Thomas Hope as part of the furnishings for his Egyptian room in his grand residence. The house was created as a showpiece for Hope's collection of antiquities and featured themed rooms of suites of furniture designed by Hope to provide a suitable background for his collection of classical and neoclassical statutory and objects to art. So here in this slide you can see his hand-drawn example of this room for his home. This slide shows several examples of other types of seating common during this style. The Trafalgar chair, the Regency style chair designed by Thomas Sheraton, and the gilt sofa designed by Robert Adam. Sofa tables were used for the library and parlor for ladies' activities and included drop leaves, round tables, and the round tables were used for breakfast and games and were mounted on a triangular pediment. Dressing tables were larger and made of mahogany inlaid with ebony. A couple examples are shown in this slide where you can see they may have open shelving or closed shelving behind doors. Sheraton gave extra attention to the work table which could be used for things like a sewing or writing table and also his beds were characterized with great details emphasizing height and drama through his use of gold and detailed work. This concludes our lecture on the late neoclassical style.